once you entered the hostel. And by the way, how do you get access? You need security codes to get in through the door if there's nobody on reception here to let you in. And if you're going to be arriving at certain times of the day or night and you need to do something called a self-checking, you will be given access codes in an email message so you can let yourself in and identify which room is yours. There's no shoes allowed walking around the hostel. You leave them here and borrow a pair of slippers if you want to, especially if the cleaning lady is cleaning the floor diligently as she happens to be doing right now. The hostel's on two levels. I will cover the top level and not get in the way of the cleaning lady cleaning the floors. Here we have a private room, a twin, a hat stand, as we used to call them in the old days. Oh, a picture of, is it that same ship, I think, which I mentioned before at the harbour, where I once dined because it's been converted into a restaurant. And there's a nice little feature, table and chairs. Nice, warm and cosy. Oh, there's even a full-length mirror, so I can look at myself. Um, or not. Who wants to look at themselves all the time? In mirrors, I mean, that's just vanity, isn't it? A reminder of the time in an unexpected place. Cute, eh? And there's that boat again, by the looks of things. A little spot for yourself, perhaps, if you want to just sit down outside the room or outside of any of the rooms where you might be staying because you're free to move between the hostels and between the kitchen and common room spaces. This is the upstairs kitchen, kitchenette. It's got everything you need, as you can see, and if you can't find a particular item here, you're very welcome to go downstairs and borrow something from the kitchen down there. Very comfy, plush seating arrangement currently. I say currently because it seems every time I've returned to the hostel in recent years, they've been carrying out renovations, improvements, alterations, trying to gauge what backpackers are really looking for and wanting. And do they need a television? Will they want to follow some sporting event or watch a movie or a TV show? Not every backpacker's the same. If there's the World Cup in football or ice hockey or any other sporting event, your guess is as good as mine if the people staying in your dorm are fans and want to watch their team in the final of whatever that competition might be. There are a few reading materials there in some different languages actually and plenty of maps to help you during your stay. There's a little mini library of books here. Again you'll find in different languages. Yes, they do have a microwave. Yes, they do have a fridge. They've even got some disinfectant for your hands. Toilet here. And a shower in there. And here we have a nice six bed dorm, which is where I thought I was going to be staying. But I ended up in the five bed dorm. Not going to complain about that now, am I? Curtains for a bit of privacy for the down, downstairs bunks, for the bottom bunks, I should call them. Some chairs, simple chairs. 
where you can hang your coat over the back, rest your bag, rest your bottom. Perhaps these double plugs and lights for those who need them, which is most people these days, I guess. And more there and you just easy to make your own bed you just throw the sheet down pillows already got its case on top um, you just put one ground sheet down pretend you're camping put one bottom sheet that you lie on and then you've got the duvet over the top of you and you've even got a free towel available for your stay. What more do you need? Plenty of light, plenty of darkness when you need to pull down those shades in the summer when the daylight seems to go on forever and throughout the night. And along here we've got another shower. And a shower, WC. Won't look in all of them, but just to give you an idea. Very nice indeed. And unlike one place where I stayed recently, I can't remember exactly which one it was, to be honest. You had to bring your own toilet paper. Yeah, I know, it was in Europe can't remember I honestly can't remember but you had to otherwise I'd be giving you the tip but in 2023 there's a hostel in Europe where you have to supply your own toilet paper always a good idea to have a little bit in your backpack anyway because you never know when you might need it hall bed dorm looks nice doesn't it not least because you seeing what I'm seeing they could have exploited this and turned it into another six bed dorm, like many businesses would. But not here. Martinez and Jurga, the owners, are really traveller orientated and try to do the best they possibly can for people and think like travellers because they are avid travellers themselves. I've been to more places than I have, probably with and without their kids. They've been in the hostel business for 20 years and I think they've made this a very nice four bed dorm. Super if you're a family with two kids. Super if you are just wanting a four bed dorm with a single bed option. And now you've watched the video, heads up when you book in advance, whether it's in booking.com or direct to the hostel, which might be the best way to go, write a personal note. Please, could I have a single bed? One of the two single beds in the four bed dorm upstairs in room six, please. Or alternatively, there's one single bed in the five bed dorm downstairs where I am. So you've got some options. And you may have thought to yourself, yeah, but lockers, security, that's what I'm concerned about. We have lockers here, which are free to use. Got a private room probably won't be too concerned about the need for lockers and oh look at this they splashed out for air conditioning in Lithuania where what 11 months 11 and a half months of the year you may never need air conditioning but just when there's a sudden hot spot and it gets up to 30 degrees maybe more you never know these days with global warming do you there's an air conditioner, which if 
you remember to keep the windows closed that's the trick that air conditioner with the windows all closed will keep the floor nice and cool throughout yes I can speak from some experience of being here when it was really hot and when people complained about oh the air conditioning's not working it doesn't it's still hot keep the windows closed and I know it's really hard if you're in a dorm and you've got some stinky people or just if you're in a dorm where you've got six people you've got everybody's stale breath and armpits and feet smell from having spent the night there so it doesn't smell good in the morning but in the morning when you're leaving that's when you can open the window to get some fresh air and then when you come back in the late afternoon or evening close it again if the air conditioning is necessary and is whirring away and then the whole floor where you're staying will be nice and cool if of course for some reason you're staying in the hostel all day because you've broken a leg well yeah I just can't imagine why you would want to stay in the hostel all day but there may be some people who need to do that you may have thought oh there are not too many lockers there well there are more lockers that you're free to use right here as well smaller but even so they're lockers you can put all your valuables away and currently I'm in room two I'm going to try out two rooms while I'm here the five bed dorm which as I mentioned upstairs you've got the luxury of a single bunk if you want it but the double bunks are rock steady you <laughs> they're really good so even if you've got somebody who's a fidget in the bunk above you you'll be laughing you'll get a good night's sleep and they've given me the bed where they've had a consignment of curtains to put for some privacy and to shield for extra light protection should somebody stumble in and turn the main light on at two o'clock in the morning which is unlikely in this hostel to be fair because most of the folks staying here as backpackers will be coming to um, visit the nature go over to Naringa to the huge sandbar which is like an island to explore not to go out and get drunk and then stumble back and be a nuisance in the hostel in the evening it's not that kind of place so we've got some chairs if you need to rest your weary bones and change your socks or something we've got the light sockets and light oh we've got the power sockets I should say and light another power socket down there and nice big lockers in this room so maybe this room would suit you more the five bed dorm each to their own I will be staying in a couple of days time in this private room and for one night only and obviously purely in the interests of discovery and for your benefit not for my additional comfort and privacy obviously but I just felt maybe I should do the right thing by my viewers and give them a little review of one of the private rooms here's a private room which used to be a four bed dorm believe it or not back in the day it's been reimagined as an office in the past and now as a private room two single beds I shall occupy one as I say just for one night only 
There's a nice mosquito net, which you probably can't see, which blocks out those little varmints. Therefore, when those komari try to come in and bite and suck my blood, they will be foiled. Even when the window's open, which probably would be a necessity for pretty much all of the summer in my case. Right over there is the bus station. And I'm going to head over there now to do a bit of extra shopping just because you wouldn't believe it, but it seems as though perhaps some of the milk from my carton has evaporated while I was Well, leaving it unattended in the fridge. Okay, my name's there. Date of departure's there. Milk shouldn't have evaporated like that, should it? But it's, yeah. The litre carton is a little light, shall we say, since this morning. So it can only have been evaporation, I guess. Yeah. I'll get some more milk and keep my fingers crossed. No more evaporation, hopefully. Right, back to the shops. Look what I found while snooping around the bookshelves in the hostel. That's right. This is just a sample of what awaits you here at Clypeda Hostel. Until somebody pinches it, of course, because they can make use of it when they go to Vilnius, for example. Here's a Vilnius map. You can perhaps use the map to plan your time in Vilnius while you're here in Klaipeda and leave the map here for the next guest. Or, if you think you really can put it to good use in Vilnius, I'm sure nobody would complain if you took the map with you. And it's not all in English, which is a nice change, particularly for German guests, I'm sure, because lots of German guests come through the Baltics, often on bicycles, but not always. Discover Klaipeda. There you go. Broadened our horizons. We've learned that the German word for discover is entdecken. And if you're heading over to the Coronian Spit, the large, long, lean-looking sandbar, we have Nidos Campingas, which is a little booklet in English, Lithuanian, German and Russian, giving you your options if you want to legally camp over on Neringa, the Coronian Spit, particularly in the largest settlement down in the south, at Nida. Klaipeda in your pocket, including Palanga and Nida. You might want to book a few more nights while you're here, you know. So much to see and do. And look at this super reference book in French. Lituanie. A whole book about Lithuania. So you really can't complain. You've got so much touristic information here just lying around the hostel waiting to be put to good use. Super. Come one, come all. It really does look as though everybody's welcome in Klaipeda and especially at the Klaipeda Hostel. And what do we have here? That's right. Their 10-bed dorm. And as 10-bed dorms go, it's quite spacious, actually. Nice, real big lockers. You can get a full backpack and more in there. How's about that then, folks? Curtains for the bottom bunks. 
You've got your double plugs and lights next to your bed. You've been spoiled. More curtains coming. More improvements, changes. All for the benefit of us backpackers. And we've even got... Look at this. That's Little Falcon. Sure, there's no sea view. But what do you expect? Still a lovely little place to sit out, isn't it? Or if you want to dry your swimming trunks, or your shoes, or socks, or something, the washing line in the garden doesn't suit you. Or if you want to put your stinky shoes and socks somewhere overnight, rather than the shoe rack, you can put them out here. Just check the weather forecast. It would be a shame if it rained, wouldn't it? I think the 10 bed dorm is going to tick up all the boxes just like the rest of the hostel. I better get out before more people arrive. Just taking advantage of the fact that the others have all checked out. Like 2004 was the first time I stayed here, believe it or not. And I'm still welcome back. I must have been doing something right or not screwing things up when I was in this hostel anyway. So this is the latest reimagined hostel reception. Spending fortunes on reinvigorating the hostel post COVID. Tourist numbers are back in high season as strong as they ever were, I'm told by the owners. Do book ahead because there are less hostel beds in Klaipeda than ever before. Certainly less than uh, living memory for the likes of me coming around the Baltics. There was another genuine hostel, Kubu Hostel, with dorm beds, dorms. It was aimed at the backpacking crowd, but they've gone over to more private rooms and apartments. So this is the only backpackers hostel in Klaipeda. By and large, that's because outside of the summertime, there basically isn't enough tourism to create a need for a hostel. This place does stay open 12 months a year, which is a credit to the owners. Yep, they pay for all the inflated heating costs, lighting, water, gas, electricity, Wi-Fi, business taxes. They go through all the palaver of keeping it all up and running, just in case one guy like me or a gal like you shows up out of season and wants to get a bargain price bed and not a private room in a hotel, which is the expensive alternative. And we backpackers, of course, don't like expensive alternatives, do we? Not if we can avoid them. There are a few rules in the hostel, but I don't think they're going to be difficult to abide by. From 11 o'clock, be quiet. Do not wear shoes in the rooms and bathrooms. Leave them on the shoe shelf, which we've already covered. Just up the stairs there. After you finish eating something delicious, drinking tea or coffee, please wash up your dishes. You're not allowed to smoke inside the hostel. Please smoke outside. Checkout is at 11. You can leave your bags after that if you need to pop back for them later in the day. Feel free to ask any questions. Free sweeties. Nice till I paid a hostel pen, which I got to try and avoid stealing, but I think I am probably going to steal one before I leave. 
with the owner's permission, though. And there's a guest book if you want to write good things or bad things or indifferent things or draw a picture of your fellow backpackers or type or write in, draw a big heart with, what's this? Dear Clypeda Hostel Team, Yogita and Martinez. Thank you so much for amazing stay every time I'm here. Feels like home because of you all. The kitchen on the first floor, amazing. Congratulations. Wish you all the best and more. Who are these people? Are they being paid for their good reviews? I'll tell you what, they're not. That was 2019. You'll still find the couple who run this hostel, the most genuine, decent and wonderful people you're likely to meet. They really do do everything in their power to give you as much as they can of themselves, their time, and to provide you with the best hostel that they can conceive of. It's an absolute joy to be here. And, yeah, bottom line is, it's a business, so prices will go up. It's not 2004 anymore, but you'll get value for money, which isn't something that can be said of every hostel where you stay. Here's the washing machine, which you can pay to use if you need that service. And you can either dry the washing outside in the garden. There's washing lines down there. There was the parking space, should you need parking. And shall we venture in, stick our nose in the common room kitchen area down here? This used to be uh, purely a common room area. And then I happened to be staying here for some months back in 2018 when I was recuperating from a severe back problem. And I was really struggling to be mobile and I noticed during the course of that summer that virtually nobody was coming in and using this common room so I, I said to the owners well look pretty much nobody apart from me is using it as a common room maybe move the small kitchen which was just over here it just ran along here, basically, where the blackboard is. Small kitchenette, why not move the kitchen, put it in here, what do you think? Does it make sense to you? And I was a bit scared when they immediately decided, yes, that's what we'll do, that's a good idea. Because I usually come up with lots of ideas and most of them are rubbish and don't work and Probably why I'm a broken down backpacker. A traveler going nowhere. Another little library here for the tall enough to reach the books. And you can sit down at these breakfast bar type arrangements for your meals, which apparently are working out popular because people are using them and enjoying them and also getting out their electronic devices and ooh, got a couple of plugs down there, how convenient, and working away on their laptops doing whatever they're doing. And it's all rather nice. And if you do want to relax and there's a group of you and you want to watch that sporting event or that little movie or the final episode of that show that you've been following. There's a TV up there for you. Microwave, big fridge and freezer. So a little bit more elbow room perhaps down in this kitchen. 
if this one is crowded, which probably won't be, but if it should be, there's the little kitchen upstairs as well. So regardless of where you're staying, you can use all the facilities. As you can see, it's a very nice hostel, which has grown over the years. It's now on two levels, used to be just on the one. It's one of those places where you're just thinking, traveling th through Europe, you know that this is a place you can rely on. You know, whatever else is, is the travel experience is gonna throw at you when you get to Clypeda, when you get to Clypeda Hostel, it's all gonna be good. And that's all down to the owners. Very special people. And this video is not sponsored. I am not telling them I'm doing this. I'm not getting their approval. I'm not getting a discount. Uh, it's just my honest, heartfelt feeling about the place and the owners. Terrific. Highly recommended. After how many hundreds and hundreds of hostels have I stayed in? Well over 5,000 nights in dormitories. Can you even imagine? Some of the places you stay in, they're not all like this, sadly.